Good morning, everybody. My name is Sarah. It's Tuesday. It is back to work day, actually. I'm watching a bicyclist go down the street and I'm really jealous, uh, but I'm gonna get outside real quick. Uh, anyway, uh, the four day weekend is officially come to a close and I have to go back to work today. But as I mentioned yesterday, I am going to replace the hard drive in my laptop with a solid state drive. It's been something I've been meaning to do. Um, editing on that thing without a solid state drive is a pain in the ass. And I've never had really a whole ton of luck with external solid state drives. Um, not even just external solid state drives, just external drives to begin with. They just get rattled around, things break. It's just a lot more stable to have it right inside the computer. Uh, these days, you know, for an extra hundred bucks, you can get an internal solid state drive and then you don't have to worry about having a peripheral or a cable or anything like that with you. So uh, I started the process last night. Uh, for those of you who are curious as to how to do this, I was going to do a separate video, but there's tons of tutorials on this and it's a really brief process. So I'm going to just include it in the beginning of this one. So you can just kind of fast forward past it if you have zero interest whatsoever. But at any rate, I started the process last night. There's a ton of cloning uh, softwares out there that you can use that will basically take a carbon copy of your existing drive and put it on the solid state drive. And I started with a paid software called Paragon. Uh, it was $20, uh, really cheap uh, program, but for some reason I kept getting errors, um, like not enough space errors, it would fail. I did this over and over again and I said, fuck it. So I actually ended up going on the suggestion of another individual I was talking to in one of the Paragon forums. Um, there's a program, It's there's a free version of it. I use the trial version actually. It's called Drive Clone uh, version 11. And it had all the features that I needed on it. Basically, all I really needed first and foremost was to clone the operating system, my program files, my settings, all my basic stuff. Any of the data left on the hard drive was not that big of a deal because I have the external drive reader and I can just drag and drop whatever the heck I wanted. So I used that software. It's very intuitive. You basically, what you're gonna need for the project if you do it is some kind of USB serial drive reader. I have like a, a stand, but they also have one that just kind of plugs into the serial port on your drive. Uh, USB 3.0 is obviously faster. Um, and then you'll need one of these programs. And the Drive Clone 11 was one that was highly recommended by this gentleman. And I'm very appreciative of it. There was no adware, no malware, no, no bullshit to be had in this software. It was very simple. I installed it on my computer. I'll put a link below in case this is something you're going to do with your own computer. And um, I'll kind of show you a couple screenshots of it too, um, the way that it works. But you basically, a monkey can do it. You just, you know, hit, you clone your drive, it automatically detects that there's another serial drive attached to it. Um, if you have more than one, you may have to select, uh, you know, if you have something installed internally, if you have multiple bays or ports on a desktop, might be a little bit more, okay, I got to pick which one, but in this case, I've got uh, master drive inside the laptop and peripheral drive outside laptop. Basically, this thing took, I actually ended up doing it overnight, uh, probably within about 35 to 40 minutes. It was about 35 to 40%. Uh, granted, I think this device actually I have was USB 2.0. I've had a couple years. Um, but at any rate, I let it go overnight. It probably took a couple of hours. So this is one of those things that you're not gonna probably sit there and watch it do it. I just checked in a couple times, seemed like the progress is okay. I woke up, I went out there and it said cloning complete. So now I'm going to take apart my computer, um, take the back plate off, replace the hard drive. Hopefully there are no errors with it being bootable. Um, as far as I know, you can't boot off a USB drive to test it. So the only way for me to test this is to actually take my computer apart and put the new drive in. I mean, they're plug and play and then hopefully it boots back up. So let's go do that now. All right, real quick here. You're gonna go ahead and search for Drive Clone 11 in Google. It'll be the very first link for Farstone. When you scroll down, there's gonna give you three options. Just click the free trial download option and download it. Uh, it's a very small file, so once the executable is done, just open that up and tell Windows it's, it's safe to open. And uh, it's a very simple process. There's no hidden kind of malware or adware, so you can just go ahead and select all these prompts. 
and tell that, that you're going to use it in trial mode. And when you uh, finish downloading it, it's going to give you the option to auto open it. Go ahead and do that. And when it goes to the main menu, it's going to give you an option at the very top for drive cloning. Click on that very top option. It's going to be fully usable in trial mode. Um, so when you click on that, it's going to assess what your bootable drive is on top, and then it's going to auto detect that USB drive and put that on bottom. And it's going to show you what your presets are, or what's already in place, and how it's formatted. Now, when you click the next button, it's going to ask you if you want to go ahead and format that drive. You're going to get that prompt regardless. It's going to basically clear out and format the drive for you to do the setup. I clicked no here because that drive is already in play, but for you just go ahead and click auto format and the next step just press next and you'll be well on your way to kind of formatting and cloning your uh, operating system onto your new drive. All right, next up is the money shot. You're gonna take your back cover off. A good rule of thumb is to just kind of take them out in a particular order, whether it's gonna be clockwise, counterclockwise, left to right, right to left, whatever. And I'm gonna place them all in a, on a white piece of paper in the same order that I intend to put them back together. So very simple and easy. Take all those screws out. More often than not, they're all gonna be the same, but sometimes they're different. Now, I am prying off my back plate with actually a, uh, a guitar pick, but any kind of thin pry tool will work. Um, the clips will come apart. Most of them are more robust than they were back years ago, so it'll come off. But sometimes you have to be mindful. You see, it, it, mine's not coming off here. There are actually some hidden screws underneath those rubber feet. So if you don't feel, don't force it. If you don't feel like it's coming off, try to look under some rubber feet. You can see that as I pull these feet away, there are some hidden screws underneath that are a little bit different. So I take those off and I'm gonna put them off to the side uh, and separate them from the remainder of the screws that I took off from the rest of the uh, back plate there. So when you pry it away, be a little more careful than I was. You can see I kind of yanked on that power cable that goes from the uh, volume knob and the power to the, the motherboard. So be careful with that. There are connectors there. Next thing is I'm going to just disconnect the serial adapter from the hard drive. Mine was not screwed in place. Mine just came out. So I pulled one out and plugged the other one in. Of course, I spent 10 seconds trying to plug it in upside down. It only fits one way. And you just kind of plug that back in and slide it back into place. You can see that it's just kind of very plug and play, very easy. Okay, so I'm going to reapply my uh, power cable there. Usually it's either kind of a clamping system or a plug and play system that is meant to be removable so that you can remove the back plate and get it out of the way. So I'm going to go ahead and reapply that making sure that's in there snug. Uh, those snaps should come back down. Um, obviously, I did not put that on properly the first time, so just grab your pry tool if you mess that up like I did and uh, pry the clips back apart. Uh, the, again, they, they come up uh, a lot more easily than they did in years past, so uh, I'm just gonna slide that into the what is the back portion of the computer, and I'm gonna snap everything into place. And before I reapply the screws, I'm actually going to make sure that everything is still booting properly before I go ahead and have to unscrew everything again. So when you turn it back on for the first time, uh, it might take a couple extra seconds to get it to boot up because it's reinstalling or reacquiring the configuration of your computer. So the first time I'm logging in, uh, I actually kind of skipped out a portion of uh, that, but it probably took about 30 seconds to boot up, but all my subsequent boots were much faster. All right, so everything is up and working. Everything is all booted up. Uh, I lied. This is a USB 3.0 device. Um, I just thinking based on the age of it that it was USB 2.0. So uh, everything looks like it's pretty much carried over. There's only a couple of things that um, didn't kind of carry over. First and foremost, internet settings don't really give a shit, but it's the first thing I noticed. Uh, the second thing is I've got a couple of softwares, one of them work I'm working on right now, that I have the installation key for, but it detects that it's a new hard drive, so it's asking me to activate the software. So it's thinking that I'm still like back in trial mode, which is fine. I've got activation keys and serial numbers for all the software that I've, I've paid for on this computer, so I might have to go through a few growing pains for the things that I commonly use. Most of what I need this for is for the Adobe suite, 
and that just picks it up based on uh, your login information, so no harm, no foul there. But everything seems to be working, everything's a lot faster. The first boot probably took the longest while it was probably, you know, taking in my system configuration. And, and now I've tried to kind of reboot it and it boots right up, all my software is kind of open right up. So I am pleased, it's a worthwhile investment. I will leave a link to both the hard drive and the software that I used in the, uh, uh, the show notes down below. Now I'm gonna get ready for my ride. When you forget to charge your Garmin after 12 hours of riding and still wanna go out for a ride. The theme of today's recovery ride is unpreparedness. First, no charge Garmin. Second, no jacket. Third, no long bibs, because the jacket and long bibs are both still wet. It is what it is. I'm out here, sun is bright, it's a little cooler, it's in the 40s, so I picked kind of a climbing route so I can keep the heat on and keep the speed low on a recovery ride, so I'm enjoying the scenery despite my stupidity. long bibs I'm just wearing a pair of fleece lined legs leg warmers might be a little much for today I'd rather have worn the long bibs uh, without the thermal lining in it but I was thinking about embrocation I've never used it before I know there's cold weather and warm weather embro so if any of you guys have any experience with it if you think it works if it's uh, ideal if it's better than you know long bib bibs or uh, leg warmers it's worse does it burn let me know what you think in the comments below all right just finished my hour and 20 minute recovery ride just getting ready for work here bringing some of the cheater juice with me I uh, don't have time to make a smoothie I started this morning with some leftovers from yesterday but uh, I don't know just the right nutrition fruit profile seems to make Pretty much anybody feel better, especially after winters where diet isn't usually the best. And in terms of, I don't know, nutrition, the the naked juice is actually pretty decent. I mean, there's got to be there's a pretty decent profile. This is green. Um, doesn't taste green, so that's good. But no sugar added. Not really a ton of. There's no like preservatives or weirdness or grossness in here, so. Obviously making something on your own is ideal, but this uh, naked juice is actually a pretty good alternative. So I'm gonna get my ass to work because that's what adults do. All right, quick little car unboxing on my way out. Chamois cream. I'm not dependent on chamois cream. I don't use it all the time. I don't use it on every ride. It is something that I do tend to use when I'm doing a lot of back-to-back -back long rides. Like I tend to use it more over the weekends. Like over this past weekend, I want to use it uh, just because a lot of hours in the saddle, a lot of shit going on down here there. So uh, I'm gonna try this. I don't know how to pronounce it. But it's got the word ass in it. I don't know if it's asos or assos, but. Uh, it's pretty highly recommended. I know a lot of the pros use uh, this particular stuff. I've used this, Mad Alchemy, uh, the, uh, the Buttercream, and I've tried Castelli brand. I've, I've tried a few different brands. Most of them are fine. Uh, I've even used like Docs, which is mentholated. This has menthol in it, so it'll be interesting to kind of go back to uh, a mentholated type of uh, chamois cream. But if you guys have any suggestions or things to steer clear of, let me know in the comments below. Oh, I've also tried these nuts. I like to buy things that have goofy names. And well, this has the word ass in it, so that qualifies. So shit show is the only pair of words even remotely appropriate to describe my day at work today. It could have been a hell of a lot worse, but it was just 
You know, you ever kind of go back to work after some time off and just think, you know what, I'm not really motivated to do anything other than kind of fuck off all day. So, nothing go wrong, please? Well, half the day nothing went wrong. And then all hell broke loose. Which shit happens. Everybody's job sucks from time to time. And I'm gonna go to bed, and I'm gonna wake up, and I'm gonna do it again, and I'm gonna get paid. So, who gives a shit? But thank you guys all so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.